Uh, and uh, now we have uh, Rick Lazio, Republican, uh, gubernatorial candidate from New York on our newsmaker line. Rick, it's been a long time. Welcome back to the program. Good to be on. Great to hear your voice. Thanks for all the good work that you do. Well, thank you. And uh, how's the campaign going so far? The campaign is going great. I think people are really anxious to take back their government. What we see in New York is a government that is completely dysfunctional, out of control, taxes through the roof, spending out of control, budgets that never get balanced, uh, corruption as bad as any state in the nation, and people are fed up and they want their government back. i got to tell you something. For those that think it can't happen, I just point right next door to New Jersey and, and Governor Chris, Chris Christie. I mean, he has done a phenomenal job standing up to liberal unions and uh, the liberal media and liberal legislators. And guess what? The state of New Jersey is beginning to turn around, and they're managing you know, to balance their budget finally and get their budget in line. People need to hear the truth, and that's what Chris Christie is doing. He's standing up. He's approaching the job, as I will, as a four-year job. He's saying what needs to be said, Sean, and he's not worrying about the political consequences. It's a matter, of, and for me, of public character. It's exactly what we're lacking right now. Too many people that get into office and they start worrying about their re-election or the next bullet point in their political resume, and if you want to solve really tough problems, you can't approach the job that way. You just have to say and do what needs to be done and, and live with the consequences. You know, LeBron James was uh, obviously at least listening to the New York Knicks. There was a study in one of the New York tabloids. If he would have come to New York, he would have paid another or an additional twelve or fourteen, twelve million dollars in taxes. Twelve million. That's exactly right. I mean, and you know, I, when when Rush Limbaugh said, "I've had enough. I'm getting out of here." You know, the governor of New York said, well, if I would have known that raising taxes would have pushed Rush out of here, I would have left sooner. So he leaves New York, where it's about nearly 10% uh, as state income tax. That's on top of the 40% that most people pay. So that's 50%. Then you've got sales taxes and property taxes and all sorts of other hidden taxes and fees on top of it. So it's about 60% of people's income. So you're, you're bragging that people are leaving your state in droves. Insanity. It's insanity. We've lost more people to other states in New York than any other state in the nation over the last 10 years, including California that's got twice the population. And it's overwhelmingly because of the taxes. It's, it, we're uncompetitive. And this is another, another of the many major distinctions between Andrew Cuomo and myself. I want to drive down taxes. I want to create a more competitive New York. I want a growth agenda. I want more jobs. I want people with more take-home pay. And he wants all the opposite, a bigger government, more spending, budgets that are never balanced. Taxes are okay with them. You know, they don't understand the behavioral aspects of this. You know, for every LeBron James, there are thousands of other waitresses and small business people that are bailing out because they just can't afford to make it in New York. And that's who I'm standing up for. You know, this controversy has emerged now. I've done a little investigative work into this. There's a mom that wants to build this mosque at Ground Zero, and I'm not, I'm not at all happy with some of the positions he's taken, uh, not the least of which he wants the United States of America to be more Sharia compliant. Anyway, so you suggested to uh, your opponent in your race, Andrew Cuomo, the Attorney General, uh, you, you suggested that he may want to probe into how this center is going to be financed because it's going to cost millions of dollars, about $100 million to build this thing. Right. All right, so you bring this up publicly. Then Mayor Bloomberg weighs in on this thing and says, well, I don't think we're going to start investigating funding sources for religious organizations or vetting people who preach, pray in religious organizations. It's out of character with what this nation stands for and the way we conduct ourselves. And I wanted to get your reaction to that. Yeah, but the first mission is to, is to protect the people of New York and the people of America. We can't be politically correct and we can't be naive about the threat that exists out in America. And New York is the epicenter of terrorism risk in America. We all know that. People go, they come over here, they travel the country to, to try and build networks or get bomb supplies to come back and kill as many as New Yorkers as, as possible. So what we're saying here is this is an imam who has, who is spearheading this $100 million mosque. And just for the listeners, you know, this is in the shadow of the worst terrorist attack in American history. It's so close to ground zero that the building that's currently there was damaged by the landing gear of one of the planes that hit the Trade Center. So we're talking about a couple of blocks away away from, from sacred ground, ground zero. And the imam who, who wants to build this $100 million mosque has said things, for example, like the United States was an accessory to the crime that happened in 9-11. Or in the same month of, of, of the 9-11 uh, massacre, Osama bin Laden, he says, is made in the USA. 
Now, this is a man who defends Hamas. Now, hang on a second. This yeah. is the quote that you're referring to from 60 Minutes, Osama bin Laden. This is the, the imam who wants to build this thing. Yes, yes. Osama bin Laden is made in the USA. Absolutely. The same month, the same month as the terrorist attack. This is his response. 9.30.01. This is the response to the, to the, the families of the victims of 9-11. Osama bin Laden is made in the USA. This is not a peace build, uh, peacemaker. This is not a bridge builder, in my mind. What he is, his comments are sympathetic with terrorist organizations. He has been a been connected and has been a prominent person listed on the website of the group that financed the flotilla that tried to to break the blockade in, uh, over by Israel. Uh, this is a, this is a man who is associated with radical uh, Islamic. Uh, comments, people, and causes. And all I'm saying is we need to ask some questions as to who is going to come up with the hundred million dollars. Who's paying for the property? Who's going to pay for the construction? What are their intentions? We deserve to know who's behind this did and he, what their intent is. Did he suggest that the United States, quote, didn't deserve what happened, but U.S. policies were an accessory to the crime that happened? That's exactly what he said. He said these policies were an accessory to the crime that happened. His words, quote, accessory. We're an accessory to the crime crime, which is an outrage to me. And again, somebody who says that and is leading the effort to build this, we deserve and we should and we should expect our public servants to ask the questions. What are you talking about? Who are you associating with? And who are you going to find to finance a $100 million mosque? That's, that's what I'm, I'm calling for. And, you know, I said the same thing uh, for the trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the self-described mastermind of 9-11. I said, why? who would imagine... That, that the federal government would roll out the red carpet, afford all the privileges of citizenship uh, in terms of a trial for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and have that trial in a civilian courthouse, again, in the shadow of the worst terrorist attack in American history. I don't know what Eric Holder was thinking about. Andrew Cuomo wouldn't take a position on it. I stood firm against it. Once again, in this case, Andrew Cuomo is for building the mosque. No questions asked won't begin an inquiry. I'm just saying, let's do your job as Attorney General. He's got the jurisdiction to have oversight over charities, and this is a so-called charity filed with the state. Let's find out whether the people who are financing this are legitimate people. That's all I'm asking. What do you think? Why do you think Mayor Bloomberg of New York got involved in this? I can't really say. I can just say that, you know, from my mind, this is a clear case uh, of needing to get to the bottom of things, to ask the right questions, to, to put the people of New York, the people of America, put their minds at ease. It seems to me we've been through so much. We don't want to. We don't want to take any chances, and we don't want to create any additional risk that we don't have to. We just want to have some questions answered about what the motivations and who are the people who are who are going to give this money. And interestingly, this imam again, who has said over here, well, I'm going to raise it from domestic sources. When he's overseas, says he's going to he's going to raise it from international sources. So Which sources? Of... Which international sources? What do they want? What to accomplish? That's what I'm asking. There's another controversy that has emerged in New York, and uh, the headline on Reuters was Muslims seek to add holidays on New York's, the New York school calendar. Uh, they're campaigning to add two of their religious holidays to the New York City public school calendar, uh, pinning their hopes on state lawmakers uh, after failing to win over Bloomberg's uh, support for the idea. What's your reaction? You know, I think that, that that's a, to my, in my mind, a, a separate issue in making that appeal. I think that what, what I'm talking about, Sean, and I'm not trying to just punt on this, I'm saying that's a, that's a separate issue, which is more of a religious issue. To me, this is, this is a safety issue. And that's why, you know, people who want to learn more about this, want to stand with me, want to stand up for New York, stand up for America, ask the questions, defend the American people, uh, they can they can help by by signing up and going online. Go up to on www stand up for for New York stand up for ny dot com. Well, uh, it's uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch this unfold. I think the more we learn about this controversial imam, I think the more shocked people are going to be on this. As as Andrew Cuomo said, anything publicly about it? Uh, all he has said is, uh, listen, I, I'm for the mosque, and he has raised. That this is a religious issue. It is not a religious issue. It is not. This is a safety issue. 
This, this, this goes to the heart of whether we're going to be prepared to defend ourselves or whether we're going to look the other way, whether we're going to ask the questions and feel comfortable and feel safe, whether we're going to protect our people or whether we're going to be vulnerable. And that's all I'm saying. Let's ask the questions before anything goes forward. And I will do everything I can to slow up this process and get these questions answered. I think the families of the victims of 9-11 deserve that. They have, they have stood with me. Uh, there, there are others who are interested in this topic, who, who want to feel, again, safe and secure in New York and in America. They want these questions answered. And this is all part and parcel, in my mind, of, the, uh, of also an effort to have a government that is in touch with the average New Yorker, with the average American. Not, a, not an arrogant government, not a government that's out of touch, not a government that plays to the interest groups, that wants to be politically correct at the expense of the average taxpaying, law-abiding New Yorker. That's what I'm going to stand for. All right. Uh, New York uh, uh, Republican gubernatorial candidate Rick Lazio, we'll talk to you, I'm sure, often throughout the campaign, and we really appreciate you being with us, and I support your stand on this. And uh, good luck in the campaign. We'll be checking in often. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Great to be on. I appreciate it. Rick Lazio, 800 